Okay, in this video, I'd like to finish up section uh, 3.2, which is measures of dispersion, and kind of the the main thing that I've that I've, that I've talked about how you know that that we're going to know is um is is the standard deviation. Okay, so be sure that you know how to compute a standard deviation. Um, you will see that going forward. Okay, um, so we'll just get some more practice here with doing that, and then I'll show you some things in the calculator also. Um, problem seven. Mike is training weekly to run his first marathon. He ran five different days last week and recorded the number of miles for each day. Uh, treat the data as a sample since this is one week out of a 16 week marathon training schedule. Okay, so on, uh, you know, he, on um, one, uh, one day he ran 5.5 miles, on another day he ran, you know, 11.1 .1 miles. 5.2 miles, 16 miles, and then 8.7 miles. Okay, so suppose that he did that for five, you know, five days, and then re record these these numbers here. Uh, part A, we want to compute the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. Okay, now remember that um, what we need to do first is we need to get the mean. Okay, because the mean is used in in the calculation for the variance, and then you take the square root of the variance to get the standard deviation. Um, now this is a sample, so we got to make sure that we get the correct symbol. Okay, so sample mean is uh, represented by x bar. When you add up the five numbers, you get um, 46.5 exactly, and then divide that by five, and that gives you exactly 9.3. Okay, so there is uh, no rounding here. Uh, 46.5 divided by five, 9.3. Okay, and then the next thing I do is I need to compute the variance. Now this is a sample variance, so the symbol is S squared, think S for sample. Um, and uh, also because this is a, a variance and, a, and, and it's coming from a sample, I need to make sure that I subtract one from the sample size. Okay, so I don't want to be dividing by five. If I did that, I'd get a miscalculation. Um, I divide by five by four, since five minus one gives me four, okay? And uh, again, to avoid having this look silly, you know, I, I have, have, you know, this would be my numerator and then I got a big division bar with little number four underneath. You know, to avoid that, I just write a one-fourth out front and, um, and then in the brackets, I focus on the numerator. Uh, so I need to take each value minus the mean squared. Okay, so the first value is 5.5 .5 minus the mean is 9.3 squared plus 11.1 .1 minus 9.3 squared plus 5.2 minus 9.3 squared plus 16 minus 9.3 squared plus 8.7 minus 9.3 squared. Okay, close up the bracket. Make sure that you have brackets there if you're doing that by hand. And, um, and uh, we're ready to compute. Okay, so uh, when you take 5.5 minus 9.3, um, let's see, 5.5 minus 9.3 squared gives me 14.44. Okay, and the next one, 11.1 .1 minus 9.3 squared, it gives me 3.4. Two four, okay, uh, etc. Okay, so then when I add up these five numbers, I get seventy nine point seven four exactly, and I want to divide that by four. Okay, so seventy nine point seven four divided by four gives me nineteen point nine three five. Okay. Um, now that's the variance. Okay, so to get the standard deviation, I need to take the square root of 19.935. And let's see, when I do that, I get uh, roughly 4.46 if I go nearest two digits on that. Okay, um, so this would be um, the standard deviation of the miles ran for this week of training, okay? Now, remember the standard deviation um, 
you should, you, you know, you, you, you could look at it and, and know if you got the right answer or not. Um, so, uh, you know, the, they're not asking me to, to, to do it, but if I were to find um, the range, take 16 minus 5.2, and that gives me 10.8, okay? Um, so that's not a super huge number, not a super minuscule number, and so 4.46 at least sounds right, okay? And uh, 4.46 miles would be the average from that, that spread from, from the mean, okay? So if you're sitting at the mean, and you go uh, 9.3, and if you go 4.46 miles to the right of the mean and 4.46 miles to the left of the mean, then uh, that's what we mean by the standard deviation, okay? Part B, suppose that the, that the data is from uh, 16, or week 16 of the training schedule, and Mike ran the marathon on Saturday and finished the race. The marathon is 26.2 miles, how would this value affect the standard deviation for the week if it were included in the data set? Okay, so it would increase. Um, so if I were to add 26.2 to these five numbers uh, and then do the whole calculation again for the standard deviation, S would increase, right? Which, should, which shouldn't be surprising because I, I added a bigger value in the data set and so S is going to be a, a bigger value. Okay, and it would actually be 7.97, roughly, miles if we did the, co the, the computation. Okay, um, now the, the number 26.2 is called an outlier. We're going to talk about outliers a little later on in this, uh, in this um, uh, worksheet here. Okay, uh, not, not until uh, um, the next section. We'll, 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 we'll see that. Okay. Um, and an outlier was be like kind of an, an extremely distant number from the from the pack, okay? And outliers can seriously affect the the mean and the standard deviation, you know. Um, so the standard deviation would be uh, you know more than three <laughs> um, units bigger if if you were to you know accidentally use that or or, or you know whatever, okay? So. Um, Problem eight, uh, which histogram depicts a higher standard deviation? So uh, <clears throat> remember, the standard deviation is the spread in the values. Okay, so I need to be looking at the horizontal axis here and how, there is a, how those are spread out. So uh, I've got the range figured out. So if I go 37 to 92, that would be a range of 55. And if I go 41.5 to 65.5, that would be a range of 24. Okay, so which, which uh, histogram is going to have a higher standard deviation? Well, it's going to be the one in part A, since the one in part A had a bigger range. Remember, the bigger the range, the bigger the standard deviation. The smaller the range, the smaller the standard deviation. Okay. Um, in problem nine, so we're going to use our, our calculator here to, uh, to, to solve, it um, says it's well known that uh, St. Louis has milder weather than Chicago, but which city has more dispersion in uh, the temperatures over the course of a month? Uh, in particular, which city has more dispersion in the high temperatures in the month of November? Uh, using, use the following data which represent the daily high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for each day in November from a recent year, which uh, city would you rather uh, be a meteorologist and explain why? Okay, so there, uh, well, let, let me comment on that later. Um, so what I do uh, is I'm going to use my calculator and I uh, type in the 30 numbers that are listed here for each month, for each city, excuse me. Um, so, you know, with uh, Chicago, um, and, and I've already got this typed in here, but, uh, you know, so the first uh, number would be 54, and then hit enter, okay, then 43, and then hit enter, and then 52, and then hit enter, 39.9, hit enter, 51.8, hit enter, 57.2, hit enter, okay, and, and I do that, okay, and uh, 
So I've got all the values there. And um, the next thing I do is I hit stat and then go over to calc. And then I want one var stats, which is already highlighted there. And uh, usually I have to hit enter twice. And that gives you um, all the statistical information about the data set. Okay. So now we want to know which, in, in which city would you rather be a meteorologist and why? Well, um, let's see. So um, it, we're going to assume that the, that the, you know, the month of November is the entire data for the month. Okay. And so, so you, you assume that this is a population standard deviation, not a sample. Um, and uh, the population standard deviation, I'm getting uh, 8.54, looks like, degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the range, they're not asking for that, but the range would be where I take the highest value minus the lowest value. Okay, so take 66 minus 30.9, and you get a range of 35.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so then I do the same for San Diego. I type in all the numbers, and then I hit stat, and then I hit enter, and um, again, assuming that this, this is a population, so the, in the entire data for November, um, the standard deviation for uh, San Diego is uh, should be roughly 6.14 degrees Fahrenheit, and the range, uh, 84 minus 62.1, uh, let's see, 62.1 is um, right here, okay, that gives me a range of uh, 21.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so where would you rather be a meteorologist? Now, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not asking, where, where's the weather better? In November, so where would you rather be a meteorologist? No, they're not asking that, <laughs> okay? they. They, they, they're asking for you to, you, you know, so a meteorologist, that's, that's this person's job, right? And, and if, you, it, if, you, if you screw it up, then you're likely not going to be holding that job for very long, right? So, so wh where would you rather be a meteorologist? Well, Chicago has more dispersion, so degree to which the values are spread out. So a meteorologist would likely prefer to work in San Diego, right, since the standard deviation is smaller. Okay, so you know, and on, on, on one day in Chicago, it's 66, and on the next day it's below freezing. Okay, so it's so it's more likely that somebody could make a mistake if they're a weatherman in Chicago. Okay, where it's less likely if you know if, if they're a weatherman in, in uh, San Diego. Okay, um, so uh, you know, just just a. Uh, an example using the calculator. Um, now, if a data set has more than 10 values, just use your calculator when computing the standard deviation. Okay, I, I've got a note there. Um, and uh, in uh, section 3.2, uh, here's the problems that I'd like you to look at in the book. Um, uh, so the, um, the, the problems in the book that have uh, more than 10 values would be uh, Problem 17, problem 23A, and then problem 25, and then problem 41. So, you know, I you just just use your calculator on on, on those problems, and and it should be fine. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and stop right there uh, in the notes, and uh, we'll pick up with three point. We, we, we're going to skip 3.3, and I'll I'll start in on on 3.4 then in the next video.